Hey, it's Spence from launchflows.com. In this video, I wanna talk about basic SEO for your LaunchFlows sales funnels products. Now, whenever you're setting up a website, it's important to try to get organic results driving people to your page in addition to whatever paid traffic or other types of traffic sources you're gonna use. One of my favorite plugins is Rank Math, which is really one of the more popular plugins in the last year here in WordPress with over a million users. Today, I'm gonna to focus on just the parts of using Rank Math that have to do with the product in WooCommerce, especially when you're doing a sales funnel with launch flows. Now, the basic setups of Rank Math that be handled in other videos, or you can look at their really outstanding uh, tutorials that are on their site. But today, focusing on the product, I wanna show you some of the components you're gonna use for adding to the setup of a really good product sales page. Now, one of the caveats I wanna give you is that it's not always true that you need to do this if your product is designed for quick checkout. There's a difference between a product that's being used for the function of being purchased and a product that's being used for the purpose of being its own sales page. One of the benefits of using launch flows with rank math is that you have the option of making any product into its own sales or checkout page. And that means you can optimize the things that people see for that purpose. In this case, and for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the option with launch flows of making an instant clean sales page. So what we wanna do here is make sure that Google and the other search engines are gonna give this as high of a ranking as possible based upon the nature of the content I put in the page as well as how I structure it. Having said that, let's now talk about rank math. When you're using rank math, you will see a rank math score that also leads to the widget that you'll need to use. Or I should say in this case, the actual meta box is on the side. Now you'll notice that you can also access uh, this here in the right hand side under plugins. I can go over to the rank math and call this up. So what I'm gonna do is now talk about the basics of the setup. When we're doing SEO with rank math, what we need to do is determine what would be a good keyword for this product or service that I'm selling as a product. In this case, if you need help, Rank Math makes it quite easy because they provide a link to Google Trends. And this will allow you to look either by your own country, for example, here, United States, or I can look worldwide. Here I'm using two keywords. Now, the structure of how many keywords you use is really dependent on the type of things you're selling and your SEO strategy. Here I'm talking about a pizza uh, product that I really wanna focus on the fact that it's New York style food, it's New York style pizza. Uh, in that case, I have two keywords and I can see there's some pretty nice trends going on here. In other words, if this was a very, very low number, if there was almost no interest, I would probably say ignore it. Well, let's look at the difference. Pizza is the blue. It's getting pretty good interest. New York food, eh, it's getting pretty much zero. So if I was to eliminate that and just look at it by itself, I would have a higher possibility of getting interest in this topic because although it wanes a little bit between 50 and 75, 80%, that's a pretty good result. And in order to make this into reality, I'm gonna drop my first idea of doing New York pizzas, or I should say New York food, as a additional keyword. Now, there's another option that I'm not gonna cover here, and it's for the content AI. If you're looking for ideas on how to auto-populate the content and the other SEO things, they've got a new feature that's available that's really powerful, and I'll cover this in another video. And this would allow you to use the power of AI to actually go out into the world, find the things that would be the best results for you, and apply them. Here we're going to do it manually. Now, what we're shooting for is as close as possible to 100 out of 100. However, realistically, anything in the green is going to be better than in the yellow or the red. So don't set your expectations at needing 100. That's a pretty high bar for everybody. Something in the green is good. And here we're actually at 90 without a lot of work. Let's talk about the things that happen. First of all, the categories here are basic SEO, additional, title readability and content cover the things that are important at the present time with Google's algorithm. So if we were to change some of the things, we would see where the differences come up. Let's go ahead and start with the idea of changing the title of the page. I'm gonna copy it so I can bring it back, but let's just call it something like pizza is delicious and see how it affects our score. When I update the page, 
And when we go back over here, we're gonna see that our score dropped not too much. It dropped to 89. Um, one of the ways that you can actually assume that this is gonna drop lower is by removing the keyword. So watch what happens when I take out keyword. New York food is delicious. And this is gonna have a higher influence. If we want a faster result than changing the title, we can also click over here to this side and just change it directly. So let's change it here. New York food is delicious. And you'll notice this is giving us on the fly a kind of sense of where our score is gonna be for this particular attribute. And that's quite low compared to what I had. Let's see how that affects our score over in the general tab. And look what happened here. We really dropped out of the sky. We went from a 90 to an 89 down to what appears to be a 50. So the number one rule is focus on your title. No matter what else you do for this product, the more you're able to put in a product title that works with your keyword, the better you'll be able to get a high score and connect yourself into some organic traffic for a trending uh, keyword. So let's go ahead and fix it. And we'll put back our original title and we can immediately see how our score pops back up to a 90. Let's talk about another attribute. We're gonna go over here and say inside of the SEO meta description. Similarly to the title, if we go over here, we can see that the meta description is below. And that is where you wanna have the right number of characters, something as close as possible to 160, without going over and without going too far under. Let's see what happens. I'll copy this again and let's make it a little short. We'll get rid of everything but that. And let's see how that affects our score. Now in this case, it didn't actually have a huge drop because we're really still in the ballpark, but let's try it the other direction. Let's put in a bunch of mumbo jumbo. We'll double up our number. Notice how I went over the top. Let's see how that affects our score. If I click update, I think we'll see whether it has any real influence. In some cases, we might find that it actually doesn't have a great influence. It's just a matter of preference. If somebody can't read all of the details, there's not really much point to putting them in. And let's refresh the page. And look at that. We've dropped again, just slightly to an 89. Not as bad as before, but at least worthy of consideration. So let's go and fix that. Now let's talk about a couple of the other ones that might have a little more direct influence. Uh, first of all, the permalink. Ironically, that actually is worth something. So having the keywords in there is important. Watch what happens when I drop pizza out of here. That's gonna have the greatest effect. We went down to an 85 right off the bat. So little things here and there add up very quickly. We put pizza back in and it's gonna fix that problem. We go back up to a 90. Let's play with a couple other ones. All right, one of the things that I find interesting is the total amount of content needs to be about a certain number. And Rank Math has these really great hints. So it tells us here that 600 words is an ideal quantity. Let's see what happens if we take a chunk of this out. Let's go to the bottom. And let's take this whole chunk out of the bottom. We notice our score drops to an 82. Okay, similarly, if we go ahead and look at some of the other ones, let's put that back in, and it's gonna go back up to 90. If we look for the focus keyword found in the content, you need to put it in a certain amount, but not too much. So the keyword of pizza is in here, just the sweet amount. If I were to do something silly and repeating it again and again, let's see how it affects the score. And this is absurd, but I'm just to try to prove the point. Pizza, 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 pizza. I think I sound like one of those commercials. Notice that the score dropped to an 84. And the reason is shown with the red flag here. The keyword density is too high now. It's at 3.74, which means it's measuring how often it sees that keyword. And we can literally start to edit this and see that number improve as we go. Watch what happens if I take some of these out, maybe half of them. We might get somewhere in between. Let's see if it bounces. It's still unhappy, probably because we need just to get to the edge. Let's just take them all out. Some of the scores actually jump in increments. So like that one, for example, as soon as I tripped over the certain amount, it went from a, uh, 90 down to 84. 
and I had to get rid of all of them to get back to it. Now, let's talk about internal links. It wants you to link internally to some of your own content as well as externally to other content. And you can definitely with external content use the no follow so that you're not sending over link juice to some other source. But for your internal links, I would recommend there's lots of opportunities here, including the fact that you can link to your uh, functional pages, like your My Account area. You can link to other documentation or tutorials that you have on your site. So what's really important is to make sure that you add the links whenever this doesn't show up properly. Here, for example, I have a couple links. Some of these are internal, some of these are external. Let's find the one that's internal. And this is my internal one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And let's see if our score drops and we get that red flag. Okay, and we click, we drop to an 85. We got the red flag. We couldn't find any internal links in your content. So in this particular case, if I find something else and I was to link to it and I could go to my thank you page or something internal that will qualify, that will improve my score back up to a 90. So it's really quite fun in many ways to do SEO using rank math, especially when you're talking about your product. Because when you combine this with the things that will help people understand what the product or service is doing, as well as the fact that you have to just sort of follow a bit of a recipe here, you can very quickly get into the habit or the pattern of getting all green. Now, finally, there's things like content readability. These are a little more esoteric, but if you happen to be a long form writer or you have bad grammar, you can use any of the AI tools, including the one built in here, uh, to help you with your grammar. It's also a good idea in general, whenever you're working with any product sales page, to try to limit yourself to one sentence or maybe two sentence maximum paragraphs. At first, it seems a little stunted, but after a while, you get used to it. Notice. Sentence, 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 sentence. Having the spacing and having just one sentence at a time is both good for SEO as well as it's much easier for people to consume it than long paragraphs. It's just really hard, even this one, which is just two or three sentences. It's just a lot to consume, especially if the width of the page or the width of the display on the page is a little wider. So the takeaway from all of this is that what you're shooting for is something that makes all of the lights go from red or yellow to green, make it as good as you can get it in the green and be satisfied with it. Finally, when you're using these tools, you can see we've got some other things that are available to you right here on the sidebar, which is quite convenient, frankly, about using rank math. Uh, you can set your uh, preference for this content for robots. Now, we actually do want this product indexed because it's a sales page. We want to get organic traffic. What's important is that rank math already makes this easy for us in terms of the schema. Schema is a way for Google to know more instinctively what to display in the actual Google listings. Whenever you have a product or a service, the schema will be able to automatically pick up things like, what's the price? Is it in stock? What's the quantity? Things like the description of the actual details of the product. And the various schemas are available at Google, but some of them include the kind of schemas for an article or a post or a biography or things of that nature. But for products, Rank Math makes this super easy. It automatically detects that this is the product in WooCommerce, so you don't have to do anything unless you want to. You can, of course, manually edit this with the advanced editor, if you wish, and do some other validations. I would say for most of you watching this video, don't even need to bother. And then finally, you've got the ability to edit the actual preview directly. So we talked about the idea that if you don't already have a featured image, uh, it's important, it'll score with a red, just replace it or add it here. You obviously would also be able to do that internally with the actual product page itself by just simply finding the place where the featured image is located. So on this particular one, we go to product, product image, and we have that main uh, pizza slice there. But in my case, I wanted to edit it through rank math. So I went into the settings and I changed it to something that was a little more attractive to what I was trying to do, right? So in this case for social, I chose an image that looked really attractive and had some nice background features. Um, if you wish, you can also add an icon overlay. I don't think that's gonna help that much with your score, but it might be useful, for example, 
if you had some content that you wanted somebody to click on. You might have something that's like an action uh, picture of a pointing finger or something to the food. And you can also take a look at for Facebook versus Twitter to see if they're both sort of working out as you'd hope for. So this is hopefully, for most of you, a very good primer, a little longer than most of my videos, but useful on how you can actually optimize your sales funnel products for WooCommerce when using launch flows and of course, rank math. I'll see you on the next video.